Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 8th of December. Indian farmers launch nationwide shutdown to protest against new farm laws. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan led government's days are numbered, says Maryam Nawaz. And world's tallest peak, Mount Everest, revised height revealed, stands at 8,848.86 meters. And now for all the details. Farmers protesting against the recently enacted farm laws on Tuesday called for a nationwide shutdown a day ahead of their sixth meeting with the government to mount pressure in support of their demands. At least 20 regional and national opposition parties backed the call for the strike. Farmers says protests against three new farm laws liberalizing agricultural markets spread across India on Tuesday as farmer unions called for a nationwide strike after inconclusive talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government. Farmers from the northern farming belt including Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh states have been at the vanguard of the agitation since late last month and have set up protest camps in and around the Indian capital New Delhi. At least 20 regional and national opposition parties backed the call for the nationwide strike on Tuesday. Farmers and workers of the opposition, including the left parties, blocked roads, squatted on the railway tracks and urged people to observe shutter-down strike to mount pressure on the government to scrap the laws they believe will hurt their livelihood and benefit only corporations. Khudse voluntarily, logo ne samarthan diya. Raj dekh rahe hain bhi jab khud apne man se log ye shutter down kar rahe hain, to ye Bharat band puri tarah ham early morning bol rahe hain kaam jab ho gaya hamara. The ruling Bharatiya Janata Party has said the reforms enacted in September would not hurt the income of farmers and the government will not discontinue buying their produce at guaranteed prices, a fear expressed by farmers. More talks between the government and farmer organizations are due on Wednesday. India has called on United Nations to address the issue of barriers against access to medicines in the backdrop of equitable distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. Delivering India's statement on global health and foreign policy at the United Nations General Assembly on Monday, Indian diplomat Pratik Mathur said that countries need to come up with long-term strategies and roadmaps to deal with future pandemics. India has taken a holistic approach to health based on four main pillars of healthcare including preventive health care, affordable health care, supply-side improvement and mission mode intervention, said Pratik Mathur, councillor at United Nations General Assembly. Delivering India's statement on global health and foreign policy at the UNGA, Mathur said that countries need to come up with long-term strategies and roadmaps to deal with future pandemics, adding that equitable access to affordable medicines, diagnostic tools and technologies remain a concern. Prime Minister Narendra Modi earlier this year during his speech at the UN said India's vaccine production and delivery capacity will be used to help all humanity in fighting the crisis. Equitable access to affordable medicines, diagnostic tools and technologies remains a concern. We must address all barriers against access to medicines and new technologies, including through use of flexibilities provided in WTO TRIPS agreement and the Doha Declaration. Meanwhile, India reported 26,567 new coronavirus infections, the lowest daily increase since July 10. Daily cases have been falling in India since hitting a peak in September. The country has 9.7 million cases, second highest case load in the world after the United States. 
The United States has designated Pakistan and China in its list of countries of particular concern for engaging in or tolerating systematic violations of religious freedom and failure to stem the persecution and discrimination of faith groups. The United States on Monday designated Pakistan and China in its list of countries of particular concern, or CPC, for engaging in or tolerating systematic and egregious violations of religious freedom. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo made the announcement in an official statement, which said Pakistan and China are among the 10 countries highlighted by the U.S. State Department as CPCs, for their failure to stem the persecution and discrimination of faith groups. The report by the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom highlights Pakistan's discrimination against its religious minorities, including Hindus, Christians, Sikhs and also Ahmadiyya Muslims, which is manifested in various forms, including targeted violence, abductions, curbs on practicing religion and forced conversion to Islam. Meanwhile, the report also highlights that estimated over 900,000 minority Muslims have been detained in more than 1,300 concentration camps in China's Xinjiang, and Beijing has been engaged in human rights violations against them. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz leader Maryam Nawaz on Tuesday lashed out at Prime Minister Imran Khan saying that his government's days were numbered and the opposition alliance PDM's upcoming rally in Lahore on December 13 will be a decisive one. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Khan has warned legal action saying the opposition parties were endangering the lives of people with their public meetings amid the pandemic. Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz or PMLN Vice President Maryam Nawaz on Tuesday lashed out at Prime Minister Imran Khan, saying that his government's days were numbered a day after she led a rally through various parts of Lahore. In a bid to muster support for the December 13 rally of 11-party opposition alliance, Pakistan Democratic Movement or PDM in Lahore, Maryam Nawaz held a massive car rally in the city on Monday, which witnessed a charged-up crowd. Speaking to reporters on Tuesday, she said the anti-government rally will be a decisive one as people stricken with inflation and unemployment are looking towards the PDM. लेकिन जिस तरह लोग तंग आए हुए महंगाई से जिस तरह लोग बेरोजगारी से लाकानूनियत से तंग आए हुए इस हुकूमत की ना अहली से और इस हुकूमत की ना लाइकी से तंग आए हुए वो लोग पीडीएम में और नवाज शरीफ में अपनी निजात देख रहे हैं Prime Minister Imran Khan on Monday said the opposition parties are endangering the lives of people by holding public meetings amid the pandemic and warned of legal action. The PDM has held five similar rallies since October 16. Moving on, the working conditions of journalists in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have deteriorated during the coronavirus pandemic amid job losses, pay cuts and lost revenue. Journalists working in mainstream media in Pakistan-administered Kashmir said that they have been the biggest sufferers since the outbreak of COVID-19 as news outlets have fired, furloughed and suspended operations. They said that journalists have also succumbed to the virus and despite facing the risk of getting the disease in order to inform the public, there has been no personal security, incentives, packages provided to them by the authorities. They sought government's intervention in providing relief to their community. The effect is that the people who are affected by the virus are affected by the virus. They 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 are affected by the virus. Moving on to news from Nepal. The revised height of Mount Everest is 8,448.86 meters, announced Nepal and China on Tuesday after joint measurement of the world's highest peak. Nepal's Foreign Minister Pradeep Kumar Gyavali said the height of the Mount Everest has increased by 0.86 centimeters. The former height of the mountain, 8,848 meters, was measured in 1954 by Survey of India. 
The new height of Mount Everest is 8,848.86 meters, Nepal and China announced on Tuesday after working for a year on processing data regarding the measurement of the world's highest peak. The height of Mount Everest, also called as Mount Chomolungma, has increased by 0.86 centimeters, said Pradeep Kumar Gyavali, Nepal's foreign minister, during the joint announcement by Nepali and Chinese officials virtually. Nepal undertook the initiative to measure the height of Mount Everest after speculation that the height of 8,848 meters might not be the actual height after the 2015 earthquake which shook the nation. After completing a rather arduous and meticulous field survey works by our respective survey departments and jointly processing of the survey data by our technical committee, the two governments agreed on the new height of Mount Sagaramatha Chumalungma. Measured in 1954 by the Survey of India, 8,848 meters was the widely accepted and recognized height of Sagarmatha, the Nepali name for the famed peak. The India-Nepal Intergovernmental Committee on Trade and Transit's virtual meeting was held on Monday. During the meeting, India and Nepal reviewed the development of cross-border trade infrastructure and discussed ways to boost trade and investment, including the creation of cross-border economic zones. India and Nepal on Monday reviewed the development of cross-border trade infrastructure and discussed ways to boost trade and investment during the Intergovernmental Committee on Trade and Transit's virtual meeting. A statement from the Indian Embassy in Kathmandu said the meeting ended with both sides reviewing the progress made on the development of trade, infrastructure as well as investment promotions including the new proposal of development of cross-border economic zones and holding meeting of joint business forum. During the meeting, the secretaries from both countries noted with appreciation that despite the COVID-19 pandemic, there was a smooth and unimpeded trade and commercial cargo movement by trucks across the land borders with support and facilitation of both government. The Intergovernmental Committee is the top bilateral mechanism to review and set the way forward for further enhancing bilateral trade and economic ties. This meeting is seen as another step towards normalization of ties that was hit by a border row earlier this year. India rejected new political map issued by Kathmandu and the two sides agreed during Foreign Secretary Harshwardhan Shringla's visit to respect each other's sensitivities and to handle the border issue through existing mechanism. Moving on. A couple in Western India exchanged marital vows at the COVID-19 care centre this past weekend, wearing personal protection equipment as the bride's COVID-19 report came positive on the wedding day. The wedding ceremony took place under strict supervision of a medical staff and district administration. A couple tied a nuptial note at the COVID-19 care centre in India's western state of Rajasthan on Sunday, wearing personal protection equipment or PPE kits as the bride's COVID-19 report came positive on the wedding day. The families of bride and groom met the administration and they decided to go ahead on the day that was fixed with a low-key affair following the government's COVID-19 protocols. <laughs> और सारा ये कर्फरा के के जो साबात के जो साब है वो केलवड़ा के थाना अधिकारी और हमारे साबात के बीसी में और लड़की के परिजन और लड़के के परिजन लड़के के पिताजी थे लड़की के मावाजी थे इनकी मीटिंग हुई इन्होंने कोरोनेटिन सेंटर में बिना कुछ ज्यादा रीति रिवाज के शादी करने में सहमति जाहिर करी the wedding ceremony took place under strict supervision of a medical staff and the strict administration. The only guests at the wedding were the bride's parents and a priest wearing a full PPE kit. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. 
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button